Verse 7 says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. And we're going to see patience being one of the key uh, attributes that we need to have in order to endure, in order to be able to survive the tribulation that's coming up. And notice it says there, unto the coming of the Lord. And, we're, and I'm going to be going through, we're going to be looking at multiple passages that talk about the coming of the Lord, the coming of the Lord, right? And all of these are talking about the same event. And that event is the coming of the Lord when Jesus Christ comes back. And these are all New Testament references talking about the coming of the Lord because Jesus already came the first time. So this is the next time he comes back. Every time. I mean, it, it, to, to say that, oh, well, the coming of the Lord is different than the rapture or is different than the second coming. or is, you know, People have to, to, to create these very bizarre explanations for these passages instead of just accepting it for what it says instead of just looking and say okay well i want to know about the coming of the lord well if you want to know about the coming of the lord or the second coming then look up every time the bible talks about the coming of the lord it's really not that difficult because it's talking about the same event and you'll be amazed at how well everything fits together so in james 5 7 here be patient, therefore, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband waiteth for precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. It's coming soon. He says it's going to be happening sooner rather than later. It's coming close. So you need to be patient, and you need to establish your hearts. You need to make sure your heart is ready. It's steadfast, unmovable. Verse number nine, grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and patience. Now, we just read in verse 7, he's talking about the coming of the day of the Lord and being ready and being patient because he's coming soon. And then in verse 10, he's talking about, well, use the prophets. The Old Testament prophets are your example. Look at how they suffered tribulation. Look at how they suffered persecution. Look at how they went through all of these things. And that's your example. And that's your example of the patience that you need to have. Look at what Jeremiah went through. Look at how he was cast into the dungeon. And look at the patience that he had and how he relied on the Lord. And he didn't waver and he didn't back down from preaching God's word. But he maintained the course. Even in the, in the harshest of conditions or in the roughest of times, the, the prophets that also endured great afflictions and suffered many persecutions, those are the examples that were given to of how things are going to be at the coming of the Lord. It can't get any clearer than what it says here. Verse number 11, Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Why would we look to these examples if we are to be raptured out before any afflictions happen at the coming of the Lord? Why, why would that be? Well, how would that even make sense? Saying, look at the prophets, look at the, what they endured. Oh, but you guys are just going to be, you know, raptured out before anything bad even happens at all. That doesn't make any sense. We're looking to those examples because that's how things are going to be at the time of the coming of the Lord. Just as in the days of Noah and of Lot, did those, were those good times for, for believers? The days of Noah? Noah, the Bible says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness, but that wickedness abounded on the earth. And that's why God had to destroy the whole earth with a flood. Because people had gotten so violent and so wicked that God had to just take matters in his hands and just say, you know what? I'm wiping everybody out. Not the best of time, not the best of, of or safest of places to live. In. I bet there's a lot of persecutions and tribulations going on at that time. And how about Lot? When he just had two angels come and visit and the whole, all the men in the city just thought, hey, we're going to go and defile these people. We're going to violate them. We're going we're gonna to afflict them. And they didn't do anything wrong. They just, they just went into the land. 
No, there's going to be a lot of persecution. There's going to be a lot of suffering before the coming of the Lord. And that's what we're being warned about. And that's what we need to be ready for. 